Adding and subtracting rational expressions. So in this case, what I have, ladies and gentlemen, is 4 divided by a cubed b squared plus 9c divided by 10 times a times b. So what I'll do, Jabonic, is I'll just go over a little bit of review for you first. The first one is, you guys remember, if I had 5 divided by 4 times 3 divided by 2, to multiply, you just multiply across, right? Yes, right? Then, what if I said divide them? Well, if it was division, then what we do is multiply by the reciprocal. Right. So now addition and subtraction, one of the reasons why a lot of students have trouble with addition and subtraction because they take a little extra work. Because if I have two fractions, if I have 5 over 4, and it doesn't matter if it's plus or minus 3 over 2, but if they don't have the same denominator, then I cannot add or subtract them. So I have to have them have the exact same denominator. So I look at my denominator of 4 and 2, and I say, what is the least common multiple between 4 and 2? And that multiple is, what is the smallest number that both 4 and 2 divide into? Not that divide into 2 and 4. What is the smallest number that 4 and 2 both evenly divide into? 4. 4, right? Because 4 divides into 4, right? Um, so therefore, I need these to get to be the same. So what I need to do is multiply this by 2 over 2. Therefore, I have 5 over 4 plus 6 over 4, which equals 10 over 4. Okay? So now, so now what we're going to do is we're going to look at this problem. So I have to add these. They're fractions. Yeah, I know they have variables in them, but they're fractions. So what we have to do is get the same denominator. So the first thing I like to do, ladies and gentlemen, is determine the LCM first. What is the smallest number that, let's deal with our numbers first. So what is the smallest number that both 5 and 10 divide into? 10, right? So our LCM is 10. What is the smallest number that a cubed and a both divide into? A cubed, right? And what about b squared and b? B squared. There you go. So that is my LCM. So what that means is I need to make sure that what I need to get both of my denominators to be equal to my LCM. So let's look on the left side. What do I need to multiply 5a cubed b squared by to make sure it's 10a cubed b squared? Or I'm sorry, b squared. Well, I already have a cubed and b squared, so what do I need to multiply the 5 by? 2. But remember, when you're multiplying, you have to multiply in the numerator and in the denominator to keep equivalent fractions. Now, let's go over to look at on the right side. On the right side, I have 9c divided by 10ab. So I need to multiply. I don't need to multiply anything by 10, but what do I need to multiply a by to give me a cubed? a squared, right? So I multiply, remember, in the numerator and denominator. And what do I need to multiply b by? Well, just by b, right? Because b times b is b squared. So now I multiply across from these. So I have 8 over my LCM, which is 10a cubed b squared plus 9c a squared b divided by 10a cubed b squared. Okay? Then remember, now we can combine. Now my denominators are exactly the same. So I can write this as 8 plus 9 a squared CB, I'll just rearrange that a little bit, divided by 10 A cubed B squared. Does it matter what order you put the um, variables in? No, but usually we always like to have the variables in descending order, meaning the largest degree first and then going down. Yeah. Um, now, here comes the big mistake. Students are like, oh, why is it not 17, right? Or why can't you, you know, simplify, cancel some of these out like we did with multiplication? Ladies and gentlemen, that works across multiplication and division. That works across multiplication and division. It does not work across addition and subtraction. So since you're adding here, I can't, I can't simplify this 8 or the 9. And I definitely can't combine them because it's 8 and 9a squared c, b, is those like terms? No. no. So we can't combine them either. So that's your final answer. So it would be wrong if we went further? Yes.